Hi, hey, hello, welcome or welcome back to my channel. My name is Shelly and today is my August wrap up. I have a big pile of books. Okay, okay, okay. Let's start with the, the topmost books for some reason or other. I don't know what I'm, why I'm doing accents. This is weird. <coughs> Okay, so let's start with like the biggest pile of the books because there are four books that are part of a series. So I'm going to do this. So I read Aragon, um, Eldest, and I just need to do this because Brissinger is the biggest one of them and is at the bottom of the pile and also the fourth book which is inheritance which is all these books are the inheritance cycle um okay so except this one for some reason but all of them are quite thick books um all of them about dragons <laughs> Could you guess? Could you guess? So, Aragon is the only one of these books that I've read previously. And from what I remembered, Aragon was a very dense read. And I wasn't completely looking forward to reading the whole of The Inheritance Cycle or actually rereading Aragon again. But. You know, I've collected the books, and then as part of the Chaos Court, we had Ezra pick um, books or series that he thought he should, we, he, he, he thought we should read because August is his birth month. And uh, we kind of all have this, yeah, we, we kind of have like a readathon each, I suppose, not really. Technically, Twilight was on my birth month, and I'm not sure Twilight was completely my pick, but we did have one. Doesn't matter, now I'm running off on a tangent again. <sighs> Stop listening to me. Okay, so, I'll start with Aragon, and I kind of will only really talk about Aragon. So, Aragon, from what I remember, was a very dense read, and I wasn't looking forward to it at all. But, when I did pick it up, it was a lot easier to read. I mean, it could be because at the time that I first read Aragon, um, my, like, knowledge, not really knowledge, but my... Oh, what's the word? Let's call it knowledge because I can't think of the word. Um, my, no, my experience of fantasy books um, was like predominantly Harry Potter. And I mean, Harry Potter is very much not a hard read at all. Um, and this was a bit harder to read. It was a bit denser. Um, but I mean, it can ex be explained but by my experience being on Harry Potter and now since having read this I don't even remember what year it was that I read I can look it up and I I'll, I can look it up and I can put it up here um but it was a lot of years ago that I read this book and my experience with fantasy was not very vast uh I have since read a lot more fantasies <laughs> I have since read a lot more fantasy so it could explain why this uh was a lot easier to read this time around than it was the first time around does that make any sense um so First time around, I really liked this book, but it was hard to get through. Second time around, I really liked this book, and it was a lot easier to get through. Basically, that's my summarization of it all. Um, and then we came to Eldest, which is the second book. Um, so, there's no really, like... Um, th there's nothing that tells you that all of a sudden you are about to change point of views you just did and uh i was a bit confused for a bit like why are we now suddenly someone else because i've been following along arrogant all this time so who's this dude 
<laughs> this dude being Roran, uh, which I, if I remember cor correctly, uh, Roran is Aragorn's cousin. Um, so they are in different places and they are sort of like, um, I guess living different lives, let's just say that. Um, that was like the only thing of the rest of the series that I was like, what the freaking hell? Who's this person right now? Um, but once I like figured it out that we weren't arrogant anymore, um, yeah, sometimes I can be a very bit dense. That's that's one of the things that I don't mind different point of views, but I do like it if the author can like distinctly say, now we are doing this character or we're doing this character. Um, when it just jumps to someone else, um, it 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 gets a bit muddled but it's fine so <laughs> that's really all i have to say about the rest of the series so except for the fact that this one is so much bigger this is the third book and this is the fourth book and or book number one and two are the same size uh, i would either like all the rest of the all the books to be this size or this size because th this i don't like it i don't like it no um, I really enjoyed the whole series as a whole. Um, there were definitely a bit, a few bits here and there that I was like, hmm. And I think that some bits that could have definitely been chuffed off and, you know, not been in the books in the first place and definitely made them a bit thinner. Um, but other than that, I really enjoy the books and I can't believe it's taken me this long to actually finish them. Um, but yeah, apparently there's supposedly a fifth book, but I think it's supposed to be like in the same universe, but not like following the same characters. I don't know. This is just rumors I've heard. So do not quote me on this. Um, but yeah, I enjoyed this series um, and yeah I can't believe it's taken me this long to actually finish it but sometimes things just need to take a bit of a time and then you I don't know I don't know um <laughs> so as we're speaking about the chaos court uh why not why don't we just like talk about the book club pick of the month which was Empress of Forever by Max Gladstone. Excuse me. So I have so many questions about this book. Mostly what the fuck is this book? <laughs> and was there a point to this book at all? Um <laughs> so we we mainly follow Vivian and Vivian is like um she's like this big time innovator very successful very rich everybody knows who um who she is and it says here basically on the scale of Steve Jobs and um, yeah um so I guess she's living in like a bit of a, a, a different kind of a future than we are living in currently um where it's a lot more like it's i would i would want to say it's more like um minority report but not actually but just the surveillance part of it is very minority report if you know what that movie is otherwise i don't know how to explain and so she goes she she just in the beginning of the book she goes and just like um she breaks into this place and is supposed to like change things but then she gets taken away from this place into another universe into space really and then it's like are you going anywhere with this and then they meet this empress which was the person who takes um, Vivian away from from her earth and it's like well, well what's happening what what I did not follow this book and then it ends and it's like uh, what yeah I, I really didn't enjoy this book because I did not 
get anything that was happening. I, well, I was following along. I knew what was happening at the time, but I did not see a point with anything that happened in this book. And there's some plot twists along the way that's like, you're kind of contradicting yourself here. But okay. Okay. Um, so, yes. Um, not... Um, it will not be one of my favourite <laughs> reads of this year. Let's just say that. Um, I do still really like the cover though. Um, for some reason. Which is weird because I have a thing with faces on covers as well. So, I don't know. Whew. Okay, let's get into the other reads that I did. So, I also read The House uh, in the Cerulean Sea by TJ Clune, which, yes. Um, so, we follow Linus, who lives like this quiet life. He has, he has a cat. Yeah, he has a devious cat, which I was all here for this devious cat. I was just, yes, I like a devious cat, okay? Very much me. So basically he works, why am I holding it that way? So basically he works at this like department for uh, special children. And basically he goes around and the, the these special children, they basically live like in, I want to say boarding houses, but that's not what I mean. What do I mean? Like special schools. <laughs> Oh wow, I'm not here today, am I? Orphanage! That's the word I'm looking for. Orphanage! So these kids live in an orphanage and basically what Linus does is he goes around and checks that everything is like up to scale and everything is working as it should be, that the, the kids are getting what they need and the kids aren't like harmful to the rest of the population because this, these kids are special. They aren't like normal kids, they are special kids with like abilities, special kids. Um, so I've heard some like ups and downs of that, about this book. Um, mostly like what it's, um, what it's kind of referencing and um, the like backstory of how the plot came to be and it's been like mm, okay um I don't really see that because I know nothing about that history um I'm, I'm not gonna mention it because I I really don't know a lot about it so or like anything so look it up google it google it <laughs> if you need to um I thought this was in itself a really cute, cute book and uh, there are some bits I wanted to have like more of and but I in the end I really enjoy this book it was an easy read it was like just it was like a taking a stroll around the countryside just cozy that's what that book this book felt like reading it words words lost to me okay I enjoyed this book um I would recommend this book if it's something you feel like you want to read <laughs> yeah that was a good explanation uh and then I also read uh, The Year I Met You by Cecilia Ahern now this was a weird one so basically let's see what was her name again Jasmine Jasmine so basically Jasmine loses her job and gets um put in what was it they called it? It was garden leave or something like that. Um, so basically she, she gets put in this garden leave thing, which is uh, a thing. Um, which basically means she cannot take another job. Um, so she needs like this year to basically do nothing. And uh, she, the, the thing she does most is spy on the neighbors. <laughs> I had so many questions about why are you being such a creepy little bitch <laughs> but she was a weird person a weird character to follow along to um, but there were like other characters that dropped in every now and again um, 
basically mostly her neighbours that put more life into the story because basically her character is very dry and there were a lot of things I think she might have a bit of a let's say social disability <laughs> because wow um I'd say it's a so-so kind of book I, I came through it alive not necessarily one I would like recommend to more people <sighs> we have 13 weddings by page tune um, so basically we follow Bronte Bronte being the main can character wow words words um, we follow Bronte through um, some weird <laughs> life crisis uh so basically uh a guy who like took a break from his girlfriend way off way a, a long time ago she met this guy who took a break from his girlfriend and they had kind of a one night stand kind of thing but she i think she felt it meant more to her than she thought it should have um Fast forward to present time, and this guy now works where she works. Yay! And he's back with the girl he was taking a break from. Yay! And they're getting married! Yay! Um, so basically, Bronte is having this, like, what the fuck kind of a moment, and she kind of ends up doing being like a wedding photographer for she kind of stands in for one of her friend's friend uh, who is a wedding, wedding photographer and she stands in for her assistant and then sort of like just gets more jobs as a wedding photographer she so go she continues to going to these weddings and um also getting to know the guy a lot more and we're sort of like push in this middle of will they won't they will she find someone else will he get married to the girl he's engaged to what is happening we need to know um i'm not gonna say what happens because that would be spoilers no uh, <laughs> i really enjoy this book i really enjoyed bronte um she was a very fun character um very much one of those characters where you feel like you can like connect with that character if you get my drift yes so definitely recommend i know page tune is always like a go to recommend for me but yes one of my faves one of my faves and the last book i read is one perfect summer also by page tune yes i've had a lot of page tune books that um have been unread for a bit and now i've sort of been going through them so that can happen so in this one we follow Alice and we start off sort of like Alice at 18 she meets this boy and they have a like ah uh, they have a perfect summer hence the title and then they kind of get separated she goes off to college and or university one of those <laughs> doesn't really matter basically the same thing um, she meets this other guy who, like, notices her as well, and they start to getting into it. <laughs> um, they start a relationship, and like years, way la years later, um, Alice and Lucas, the new guy, um, is like ready to settle down and all that, and then. Joe, which is the guy from the summer, comes back into Alice's life and what? So we have a little, I almost say threesome, we don't have a threesome. <laughs> what is wrong with me? Oh no. We have a bit of a triangle drama going on, <laughs> not a threesome not the same thing not the same thing um so basically which of the guys will she pick 
This was also a very, very cute read and I highly, highly recommend it to um, anyone looking for a sweet read. So yeah, so let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Nine books read in the month of August? August. Um, <laughs> one of which being a very hefty series that I've been meaning to get through for ages. So, you know, thank you as always so much for watching my rambles and, you know, until next time, take care, oh, bye bye